Live streaming is great for capturing real. Good night, everyone. And welcome to our midweek prayer meeting. To those on Zoom, platform, YouTube, and Facebook, I trust you had a pleasant day and that you are trusting in the God of heaven to take care of all your needs. Isaiah 55 and verse 1 say, Who? Oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters, and he that had no money, come ye, buy and eat, yea, come buy, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So we are coming to Christ tonight because he paid the ransom for our salvation. He brought us, brought us back. And so I want to welcome each of you and trust that as we listen to the presentation, as we engage in prayer, we will be lifted heavenward. Our hearts will be lifted and we'll continue to put our trust and confidence in the God of heaven. Let us pray at this time. Loving Father, we thank you for the little show of rain that we have had today. We are grateful for it. And we look forward, as the uh, prediction says, to a little more tomorrow so that you can help to water the thirsty earth. We pray that as we listen to Pastor Lando make his presentation, his words will be like water to a thirsty soul. We'll practice it on a daily basis so that as we come in contact with men and women, they will see Christ living in us. Then, Father, we pray for each person listening at this time our needs are varied supply all our needs according to your riches in glory remember our shutting believers remember those who are sick those who are so suffering those who are going through difficulties in our churches and in our community at large remember those of our community and of our churches who have lost loved ones help that we all will look to you who is the resurrection and the life. We commit ourselves once again into your care and keeping, asking you to lead us and direct us in the right pathway and grant us a special blessing we stand in need of for Christ's sake. Amen. trust that you lead that and you'll join hands and hearts together to our maker and king whether you're ready or not my jesus is coming whether you're ready or not he's coming again whether you're ready or not my jesus is coming
just $67. You can make as many videos as you want, and you never need to pay. Good evening, everyone. Our scripture reading this evening will be taken from the book of Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Isaiah 41 and verse 10. And it reads, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Father, we come before you this evening, Lord, to give you praise and thanks. We praise you, Father, for who you are in our lives. We praise you there, Father, for being sovereign. We praise you there, Father, for being our creator. We praise you for being our peacemaker, our comforter, our friend. We thank you there, Father, tonight for this privilege and this opportunity to come together on the different platforms there, Father, to give you thanks and to say thank you for all that you have done for us and continue to do for us. Forgive us there, Father, where we have failed, where we have sinned in our words, in our thoughts, in our deeds. Forgive us there, Lord, for the things there, Lord, that we have done to disappoint you. We ask their Father, that you would refresh us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Use us there, Lord, in a mighty way to bring glory and honor to your name. Do for us what we can't possibly do for ourselves. Father, we thank you for your word, which gives us hope, which gives us strength, which gives us instruction. We thank you there, Lord, for the encouragement from your word. Let us know not to fear, but to trust you where we seem to can't trace you at times. Father, when we look around this world and see all the troubles around the world, Father, we thank you for this encouraging word tonight, letting us know not to fear, but to trust you. We see these signs around the world telling us there, Lord, to get ourselves prepared. We ask that you would help us there, Father, not to take your words for granted, but to do that which it says, so that we, dear Father, would be able to make it into heaven. Continue to be with all of us on the line tonight, those on Radio Land, those on Zoom, and whatever platform, dear Father, they may be listening on. We ask that you would help us to be intentional about studying your word, about telling others about your soon coming. Help us, dear Lord, not to be fearful, but to be prayerful. We've been before you, the families, dear Father, so many families are going through so much turmoil. But we know, dear Lord, that you said that if we seek you, dear Lord, that prosecution will come to us as Christians. And so, Father, help us there, Father, in spite of the trials and tribulations that we may go through at times, help us there, let us stand firm and to be bold and to tell others there, Lord, that you are indeed an awesome God. Be with each home represented here, Lord. We ask that you would touch down on each home and do what only you alone could do. Be with those that are sick. We bring before you our dear brother, John Luis. Brother Hector, Brother and Sister Smith, Christiana Smith, Sister Hodge, Linda, all the many others there, Lord, who are touched there, Lord, with all sorts of infirmities. We ask there, Lord, that you would be their physician and that you would just touch down on them and touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet and restore them according to your will because you know what is best. Continue to be with our church on a whole, our leaders, our pastors, Continue to guide them. Give us all, dear Lord, a spirit of boldness and help us, dear Lord, to encourage one another and not to bring each other down. Continue to be with our dear pastor as he breaks the word tonight. I pray that you would allow your Holy Spirit to take full control and speak through him as you have never spoken before. Continue, dear Father, to be with our young people. Continue to guide them, dear Father. There are so many distractions in this world, not just for the young, but to us older ones alike. Help us, dear Lord, to be mindful of the things that we do, the things that we say, the places that we go, so that we may not be stumbling blocks for those that are trying to come in. Be with Philadelphia in a special way, Lord. 
We ask the Lord that you would fill Philadelphia with your Holy Spirit and remove every besetting sin or evil spirit or whatever may lurk around Philadelphia there, Lord. We ask the Lord that you would just remove it and allow your Holy Spirit to just rain down in Philadelphia. Continue to be with us, continue to guide us, be with the remainder of this service tonight. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Have your way on this platform tonight and fill us there, Lord, to run and over with your Holy Spirit. We thank you, we praise you, we magnify your holy name. And as the storm or whatever rain may be falling there, Lord, I pray there, Lord, for those who homes are leaking, Lord, we ask that you would have mercy on them and spread the rain on those who may need it and have mercy on those who do not. Continue to guide us. Thank you for traveling mercies to and from, whether by air, by plane, by boat, by car. Continue to keep us protected, keep us faithful and true, and help us to keep our eyes on you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Evening, church family. Yes, we need thee every hour. And now we're going to set aside again as we continue in prayer of uh, each other over the church. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we come before you today, tonight, asking you for forgiveness over our soul, over our mindset over things that we may have done throughout the day, throughout this week, that may be unsatisfactory to you. Lord, we open up our hearts and our minds to what you want from us there, Lord. So tonight, we come with forgiven hearts, asking you to humble us and turn our lives in the, the path that is set for us and for eternity. Oh, we, we bring our sick members before you, sick individuals before you, sick family members before you there, Lord. We bring them to you tonight because you, you are the healer in each one of our lives there, Lord. We, are, we have those that are, are homebound there, Lord. We may even have those who are listening in this evening and are feeling some kind of pain there, Lord. We ask that you come before us there, Lord. And that, that physical sickness that we are feeling at this moment, show us that power that you have, that healing power that we can feel, move forward, knowing that you are the, the Lord of our lives. Lord, we ask even for a spiritual sickness that that can be revived through your word, through your Holy Spirit, that we can read and understand what it means to be spiritually uplift. Lord, we pray for our church family there, Lord. We pray for the families within the church that are having issues, problems, whatever it may be, financial uh, health, whatever the situation it is within these families there, Lord, 
allow your Holy Spirit to surround them, surround us, that we can talk among each other, encourage one another, and be blessed knowing that you you can do great things for the Philadelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Thomas. Lord, I come before you praying over our community there, Lord. There are so much things happening among us there, Lord, and we may be closing our eyes to it, but Lord, we open our mouths to you to allow the Holy Spirit, to allow your power to shine down upon this community that whatever may be, may, may be happening, that you'll take full control of it because you rule over every and everything there, Lord. Take full control of it and may the words that we speak among this community be a healing to our community. Lord, I pray for our young people. Lord, even them, even they need a mindset, a, a message to be that can shine out. So, Lord, talk with them. Spend and uh, may they spend time with you to know that there's nothing greater than to have a relationship with you. Pray, Lord, even for the message tonight, that whatever we face, that we fear not, because you are the key to all that is before us. Lord, we ask that as the message is spoken tonight, that we make it a point to take something from it so that we can live and be encouraged by it there, Lord. Lord, thank you this eve thank you for this time spent, even on this Wednesday night as we come the, the, the middle of this week, that we understand that not only now that we should come before you, but each and every day. And to not let a day pass without talking to you because we can see how much it can trouble our souls. Thank you, Lord, for the time spent. And may we be blessed tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.
want a special good evening to everybody. He promised never to leave us, and never to leave us alone. Trust you had a tremendous and awesome day. We praise God for his goodness towards us. Indeed, God is good. We have much to give him thanks for. We have life and health and strength. Oh, we are alive today, this evening. So just give him praise and thanks for his goodness towards us. Tonight, we just want to look at a very important subject, <clears throat> topic, uh, fear not. We have read our scripture reading uh, very well. I want to thank all those who have taken part uh, this evening in the service. But Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10, the Bible says, fear thou not. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. What a promise. What a promise. God is saying to us tonight, fear not. Fear thou not. I am with you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I'm going to strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of my righteousness. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we uh, begin this presentation. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the promises from your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Now, Father, we ask your anointing and your blessing upon this presentation. May something that will be said be a means of encouraging us to hold on to God's unchanging hands. So bless us, we pray, and we claim your promise. We ask of your mercies. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Fear not. You know, everyone experiences fear during crisis in their life. No matter what uh, we may be experiencing, uh, there are times that we will experience a fearful spirit. Uh, we are faced with fear from time to time. And fear is a weapon the devil uses against us to make us miserable and also to destroy our lives. It begins as a thought and then creates emotions uh, that can rule us. Fear, as it is defined, is the belief something bad is going to happen. Sense of danger or pressure implies anxiety, no courage, dread, or an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to bring harm, hurt, or pain. An unpleasant emotion caused by threat or danger. You know, someone said, and I quote that many of us are fearful of different things. There are those who have a fear of darkness, a fear of rejection, a fear of failure, a fear of danger, a fear of height, fear of enclosed places, fear of outdoors and open spaces, fear of people, some are fear of dogs, fear of water, some are fearful of thunderstorms, fear of a dentist or doctor, fear of riding in a vehicle, fear of staying alone, fear of the sight of blood, fear of crossing a bridge and I can go on and on and on. You see, fear keeps us trapped in a cage. Fear is probably the biggest giant that people face in their lives. Fear produces worry and worry brings defeat most of the time. Fear is mentioned about 63 times throughout the Bible. Luke chapter 21 and verse 26, the Bible says, men's heart, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The word of God breaks the spirit of fear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Second Timothy chapter one and verse seven says, for God has not given us, hallelujah, 
a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Gandhi said, and I quote, ignorance and weakness breeds fear and fear breeds distrust. Martin Luther King said, and I quote, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. I came across an illustration that said, and I quote, a little boy who was afraid of the dark was told to go to, uh, to an unlit back porch and get the broom. He told his father he could not because it was so dark. And his father said, son, don't be afraid. Jesus is out there. So the little boy went to the back of the house, opened the door, stuck his hand out into the porch and said, Jesus, would you give me the broom? End of quote. You know, many of us are like this little boy. We are fearful about so many things. One study showed that 92% of things we fear never happened or come to pass. There is no need sense of God for Christians to fear anything. You see, Satan was defeated at the cross of Calvary. And we know that Jesus came out victorious. So Satan was defeated at the cross of Christ and Christ's victory is ours tonight. Fear is the opposite of faith. Therefore, fearfulness is the same as faithlessness. And so God warns us of the serious consequences of being fearful in the last days. He says, fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. And I will uphold you with my right hand of my righteousness. Jesus indicates that little real faith will exist on earth when he returns. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 and verse 8, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? This will be true even among many professed Christians. In the last days, most Christians will have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof according to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. That's what the Apostle Paul wrote. It is essential since of God that those living when Jesus comes are men and women of faith who have learned the lesson of waiting on God and trusting hopeful faith. They have learned that they need not fear anything because we serve a sovereign God. We serve a powerful God. We serve an awesome God. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you. Fret not thyself. But we must learn to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. All our ways, let us acknowledge him. And so how many times have you heard Christians saying, I am worried about my job, about my finances, about my future. I'm worried about my, my happiness, my retirement, my children. We are now facing the hurricane season. Many are fearful about the season. They are worried about whether or not we will or we may experience a storm. But Jesus tonight wants to give us victory over our fearful spirit. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, 
and of a, a sound mind. That's why I appreciate the scripture we read, fear thou not, John, fear thou not, Susan, fear thou not, Elder Matthias, fear thou not, Elder Williams, fear thou not, uh, Elder Jolly, fear thou not, Sister Rowan, fear thou not, Elder James, fear thou not, Sister Raquel, fear thou not, those on Zoom, rather it's those on, on Facebook, those on YouTube, God is saying to us tonight, fear not, for he is with us, be not dismayed, for he is our God. I want us to believe God tonight and hold on to his promises. If God be for us, no one, nothing can be against us. And so in order to strengthen our faith, Jesus sometimes allows us to go through difficult situations since of God. We may encounter trials or a sickness or financial struggles, or, 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 or the devil may plague our families. And Jesus will allow it sometimes. But we must not give up. We must hold on to God's unchanging hands. We must fight the good fight of faith. We must say like Jacob, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not give in until I receive my anointing. I will not let go until I receive my breakthrough. Saints of God, we must learn to bruise our knees. Spend quality time in prayer. I said last week that there are times we are so busy. But God wants us to know that he is with us. Faith does not believe, rather, faith does not believe God can do what he says, but faith believes God will do it. God has promised to do it, to deliver you. The Bible says that God is your refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. And so, in fact, fear is is faith in the devil, one writer said. Believing that he will, believing that he do what he says he will do. And God can't stop him. But faith gives certain right of passage in our lives in area we fear. And so whenever we have a fearful spirit, it comes from the enemy. God wants to give us a bold spirit. A joyful spirit. A happy spirit. So you may be fearful tonight. I'm not sure who I'm speaking to. Someone may be fearful because you have received a bad report from the doctor. You're fearful because you don't know what the future holds. You are are fearful because you, you're wondering what will be next. But I say to you tonight that your life is in the hands of God. Amen, somebody. Your future is in the hands of God. God says, I will be with you. He says, I will never leave you. As a matter of fact, sense of God, the Bible says, and I, let me just quote it and read it. The Bible says in, in Jeremiah chapter 29, we know the text very well. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse, and verse 11. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. He will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. He says, I know the thoughts I I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you an expected end, to give you a bright future, to give you a hopeful future. Then the Bible says in, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says, be careful for 
for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God. Watch it again. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Since of God, there are so many promises in the word of God. You know, the Bible says that God has given us authority. We need not fear because Jesus has given all power in heaven and in earth. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18, then Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. All things are under his authority. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us, who believe according to the working of the mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church the apostle Paul wrote in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 18 through 22 and so as believers, I say to us tonight, as believers in Christ, we have all authority. Can someone say praise the Lord? God has given you all authority. We have all authority in his name. There is power in his name. There is healing in his name. There is deliverance in his name. There is freedom in his name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. So do not fear tonight. Do not worry tonight. Do not panic tonight. The Bible says, take no thought what you shall eat uh, or what you shall drink if God so clothed the grass and if he can feed the birds in the air. He will do the same for us because we are much more important than the grass in the field and the birds in the air. And so knowing these truths about our position with Christ, we should not fear anything, man, nature, sickness, disease, financial crisis, of Satan in any form. We should not be fearful. Yet in all these things, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Aren't you glad tonight that Jesus loves you? Aren't you happy tonight that he cares for you? Aren't you glad tonight that he will see you through? Aren't you glad tonight that he'll make a way where there seems to be no way? Aren't you glad tonight that the Bible said that he will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory? Aren't you happy tonight that he can part the Red Sea? Aren't you glad tonight, saints of God, that he can do the impossible? We serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a good God. We have God's promises. We have Christ who is exalted in sovereign authority above all things in heaven and in earth, over Satan, over man, over nature. Jesus is sovereign over all situations, sins of God and circumstances. Therefore, I close by saying, 
to us tonight that believers in Christ Jesus should never be fearful. Instead of fear, we must learn to wait on God in a trusting relationship, in a hopeful relationship. This is the attitude that we must have tonight. I challenge someone, saints of God, to put your faith in God, put your trust in God. Do not be fearful about the future. The future is in the hands of the Almighty God. All what we need to do is to stay connected with Jesus, is to have a relationship with him, is to sing the song like the hymn writer said, trust and obey. When we walk in with the Lord, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus, but just to take him at his word. Would you like to trust him tonight? Would you like to put your life in his hands tonight? Would you like Jesus to do something awesome for you? Would you like him to turn things around? I invite you tonight, sons of God, to place your life in his hands. Do not be fearful. But we close with the same text that we began with. Isaiah chapter 41. It says, fear thou not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I, Jesus, will strengthen you. I, Jesus, is going to help you. I, Jesus, is going to keep you strong. Do not fear anything. And so the Bible again said in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, and verse 31, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May God help us. May God grant us his grace. May God grant us his strength. And may we keep our lives in the hands of the almighty God. God bless you. And be faithful to the God that you're serving. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Our Father and our God in heaven, we are so grateful to you once again that we can come before your throne of grace by faith. Thank you so much for continuing to bless us with the gift of life. Thank you so much for continuing to hear and answer our prayers and for continuing to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Even though your children are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we thank you so much for the reassurance that we should not fear any evil because you are with us and we are confident that your rod and your staff are guiding us. Thank you so much each day for the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. We pray that you will continue to help us each day to cast all our cares before you. We ask that you will continue to come into our homes and restore relationships that have been broken between spouses, between parents and children, between friends, between siblings. Thank you so much that one day you are going to restore all that the canker worm has stolen. We ask that you will continue to help us to trust you by faith. We pray in a special way this evening for homes that are hurting financially that are hurting spiritually, that are hurting socially. We ask that you will bring restoration to these homes. You established the home in the beginning as the foundation of society, and the devil has done a marvelous work in disrupting and destroying homes. So we ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to move on the hearts of people everywhere and help them to realize that there's still a physician 
who is able to heal the sin sick soul. We ask that as the Holy Spirit moves on the hearts of people, they will give Jesus an opportunity to be both Lord and Savior of their lives and bring to them the joy that they've been missing. We pray for children throughout the world who've been abused and who are being trafficked sexually. We ask that you will bring healing to these individuals. We ask that you will rescue those who are now in bondage. We pray for those who are substance abuse, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, and other vices that drag the soul down to hell. We ask that you will free these individuals from their captive, the devil, who is seeking whom whoever he may devour. We ask that you will give to your children, regardless of their circumstances, the peace that passes all understanding in their homes. We pray for our brothers and sisters, especially the ones who are in places where there is difficulty and war. We pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to strengthen and empower them each day. Help them to hold on to your unchanging hand because relief and deliverance is coming soon. We pray that you will help us to love each other and to pray unconditionally for each other on a daily basis, that we will demonstrate through our love for each other that we truly are disciples of Christ's kingdom and that we are living now the way that we are going to be living in heaven. We ask that you will bless those who are listening on the Facebook as well as on the YouTube platform, especially for any individual who may not have given Jesus an opportunity to be both Lord and Savior of their lives, that they will make a full surrender because the only desire of Jesus is to save us in his eternal kingdom. As we go through the rest of this week, we ask that you will place in our path those who need to hear the good news and you will give us specifically the words to speak that we may be able to lift up a soul who is now hurting. So into your hands, we commit ourselves and we commit these things. And we thank you so much for hearing and answering our humble prayers. For we ask these mercies with thanksgiving in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall bear the glowing skies against the falling veils below let all our strength be heard. faith is the victory we know that's all Victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand the foe we fight, drawn up in dread array. Let tens of these be left behind and on unto the fray. Salvation's helmet on each head With truth for not about The arch shall tremble near the tread As they go with a shout Faith is the victory Faith is the victory shall begin before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven then onward from the hills of light our hearts with love and faith will vanquish all the hosts of night in 
King Jesus conquering gave. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. May God grant us safe. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. And see you on Sabbath as we intercede and petition the Son of Grace. Have a wonderful evening. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Pleasant evening to all. Good, good night, night, everyone. Good night. Have a pleasant week. Let the nation sing, there is none.